Ameritrip, subsidiary of publicly traded Applied Digital, has added Tommy Thompson to its board of directors. The company hoping the former Health and Human Services Secretary can help accelerate the use of RFID for health care and security applications. Joining us to discuss the future of RFID and his plans for Veritship, Tommy Thompson, former Health and Human Services Secretary, and Scott Silverman, Chairman and CEO of Applied Digital. D gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, being with us. Well, thank you. Uh, it's an honor to be on your program. Ms. Thompson, I'll start with you. Um, uh, we're, we're doing a poll today. Would you have one of these things implanted in your arm or, I don't know, under your scalp or wherever you put it? <laughs> you put it in your right arm, and it's very small. And it doesn't uh, bother you at all, but it certainly is going to allow you to identify uh, the, who you are, uh, protect your child. If uh, you have a new child that's born in, in a nursery, you can protect that child from having somebody walk off of it. You can also protect your loved ones in a nursing home so that uh, you can put a bracelet on and identify that individual and be able to find that individual if that person wanders away. But I certainly would, and I think it's the coming thing. And the problem is, is that medical technology is so far behind that RFIDs are going to really be the impetus in order for us to get new technology in the medical field that's going to help people uh, improve their quality of care. And that's what it's all about. And I'm sorry, sir, did you just say you, you would get one implanted in your arm? Absolutely, without a doubt. Okay. That's it. No concerns? No, no. concerns at all? Because I, I have to admit, I, it makes me a little queasy, makes me worry what well, happens if it gets dislodged. Well, Am well, I well, being well, irrational? Well, no, but just, just think of this. Now, if you were, wherever you are, if you're traveling, you're in New Jersey now and you're interviewing me in Washington, D.C. Right. Can you imagine if you were in Washington, D.C. and had an accident? or had a stroke and went into the hospital, how long would it be before your records could get down here? How long would it take to be able to find out what sort of meds you're on or what allergies you have or what are you allergic to? But All people right now just use cards that are in their wallet. They carry around cards that say what my blood type is, if I have the, any allergies. But the truth of the matter is the doctor doesn't know that and the emergency ward certainly wouldn't. And the problem is, is that technology is so far behind in the medical field that people are dying every day because of the lack of technology. The 98,000 people died last year because of mistakes in hospitals and clinics across America. And a good share of those mistakes could have been prevented by technology. Ms. RFID is at the cutting edge of new technology is going to help to improve the quality of health and the quality of care for all Americans. Mr. Silverman, what about privacy concerns? Hi, Mark. Thanks for having us back again. I appreciate it. The the privacy issue associated with RFID technology really disappears because Verichip is a voluntary product that is used by a patient for specific, med specific medical ailments such as dementia, such as medical device recipients that need to identify their devices and their medical records, such as cardiac care patients and diabetic patients as well, who will voluntarily receive a Verichip as they've started to receive them in the North Jersey area where Hackensack University Medical Center has adopted the system. How many people have these uh, embedded in them? I shouldn't say embedded, but put in them. <laughs> We've sold approximately 7,000 Verichips across the world right now. We believe that 2,000 of them approximately have been injected across the world either for the medical or the security application. In the United States, we believe the number to be approximately 40 to 50 at this point, which all have occurred 40 since... 40 to 50 people. Correct. Which all have occurred since the FDA clearance of the product when you had us on back in October. Yeah. And then the rollout of the infrastructure in a number of hospitals in the Northeast region, which we look to expand the hospital infrastructure to 20 to 25 hospitals or emergency rooms by the end of 2005 and up to 200 emergency rooms by the end of 2006. Uh, if I could turn to Secretary Thompson, just ask a quick question about your old job. Secretary Thompson, yeah. you, were, you were quoted last December as saying uh, uh, you have to assume that sometime in the future one of our countries, meaning the larger developed countries, is going to be hit by a bioterrorism attack. I assume you saw a, an article in the Wall Street Journal yesterday yeah. detailing failures, at least uh, thus far, in developing from U with the U.S. government's help um, new vaccines and drugs to counter biological threats and I'm curious to get your uh, your reaction to that. Well I think the story uh, is somewhat correct uh, it's, uh, but you gotta realize that the United States was starting from nothing and the Department of Health and Human Service passed the BioShield 
uh, protective legislation in order for industry to start coming into the field to produce new vaccines and new countermeasures. It's in the embryonic stages, but I think you've got to realize it's a giant step forward to where we were. We still got a long ways to go, and I still am very concerned about a bioterrorism attack. Uh, Mr. Silverman, we're almost out of time, so I'd appreciate brief answers if you could, sir. Sure. Uh, can, can you update the information on this chip? Because, of course, health uh, health uh, uh, conditions can change. You can develop diabetes, whatever. Yes, absolutely. The chip itself, Mark, has only a 16-digit identification number, and the information for your medical record databases is kept on a database that you mm -hmm. can update via the Internet. Okay. Uh, and does your company make the implantable chips for pets? Yes, we do. Okay. We do it for pets, we do it for livestock with the National Identification Program, and we do it for people. Because it just occurs to I mean, my kids are old enough to be able to be found, but it occurs to me I've got them in my dogs. Why wouldn't I have them in small children, too? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's our honor. Thank you very much. Tommy Thompson, former Health and Human Services Secretary. Scott Silverman, Chairman and CEO of Applied Digital. Don't forget to vote in our Squawk Back question. Would you implant or have implanted an RFID chip? Uh, they uh, slide it under your skin of your arm. You don't even know it's there. Log on to squawkblog.com. Do you say, yes, I do it, or do you say, I'm with Becky? No way. Answer coming up at the end of the show.